I'm the host of Discover the Oak Ridge's Marine video series, Susan Lloyd Swale. This video series is a journey in learning about the Oak Ridge's Marine through visual exploration and interviews with experts. The Oak Ridge's Marine, known as Ontario's Rain Barrel, is a major source of groundwater for the Greater Toronto Area and the lifeblood of Ontario's Greenbelt. But as you'll see in these videos, it is so much more. Here we are at episode 11 of Discover the Marine. Protecting the Oak Ridge's Marine requires citizen vigilance. Find out how two citizen leaders, Ian McLaurin, Chair of Storm Coalition, and Elizabeth Calvin, Green Germ Association, collaborate with local governments and conservation authorities, but also take on roles like monitoring, reporting, and advocating for marine protection. We're up uh, in Scugog, the height of the Oak Ridge's Marine, and I'm very happy to be here with our special guest, Ian McLaurin. Hi, Ian. Hi, thank you. Ian is an engineer, and he is also the chair of Save the Oak Ridge's Marine Coalition, and he was also the founder of the Ontario Soil Regulation Task Force. Yeah, and to be specific, I'm a water resources engineer. He's a water resources? Well, that's just <laughs> perfect for the Oak Ridge's Marine, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. In your opinion, what are some of the biggest threats facing the Oak Ridge's Marine today? The one I'm concerned about as, you know, a, a member of the Ontario Soil Regulation Task Force are these soil dumps. Right. There's 25 million cubic meters of soil that comes out of excavations for condos and office towers, subways, pipelines, highways, whatever, even, even the construction of individual homes. When they dig out the basement, that dirt has to go somewhere. The people who accept that dirt on their properties, they make money. And an unscrupulous operator can make a huge amount of money if he throws in a little bit of contaminated soil and tries to pass it off as clean soil. That's a major threat. One of sort of the standard sampling rates is one sample per 50 trucks. And a sample is the size of a thimble. So how much can slip through? How do we monitor this threat and make sure that it's not contaminating our water? The provincial soil regulations, they require soil to be tested when it comes out of place and for studies to be done as what was the past history in the property. And the trucks are tracked from where they pick the dirt up to where they dump it. There are about 150 pages of soil tables which give different contaminant levels that are applicable on certain types of land. So that all sounds kind of nice. But when it slides off the truck, it's now the municipality's responsibility. And the municipality, well, there's so many municipalities on the Marine, there's 30 municipalities. There's nine conservation authorities who look after development. And a lot of them are rather small offices. They don't have the resources, don't have expertise to really understand what's going on. You know, the, the soil regulations are 18 pages, plus 50 pages of rules, plus another, another book of, of explanations and guideline documents and everything. It can be managed. Okay. Municipalities can bring in good soil bylaws. The organization, Ontario Soil Regulation Task Force, did produce model bylaws with soil management plans that municipalities could pick up and, and use, and some of them did take parts of that. Okay, good. So, so that'll help. But that's not all 30 municipalities at the moment. Only a no. few of them have got the regulations and bylaws in place. So we need organized citizens organizations like yours oh, to yes. go out and encourage those municipalities to take further action. Yeah, we do now have these good soil regulations. So we don't expect to see an awful lot of contamination now because things are really well tracked. The industry is well aware. Even clean soil does have an impact on the moraine. Now picture that same land, you know, 50 hectares or whatever, leveled off completely flat with clay soil. That rain and the snow melt now just runs off, yeah. doesn't go into the groundwater, goes to the ditch, picks up all the roadside pollutants. If there's too many of those types of soil dumps in that watershed, that stream becomes a dirty torrent in the springtime and dry in the summertime. So the impact of these fill sites is not just contamination, but they do affect the hydrology. So Ian, are governments doing enough to protect our drinking water from the contaminated soil threat? The province, we've, we've had them do the, uh, the soil regulations and that has really helped clean things up as far as the soil goes. Um, 
we have the Oak Ridges Moraine Act. But the other thing we have to think about is there are threats because of outside or other legislation and regulations. We've got the uh, <coughs> Aggregate Resources Act, mm -hmm. uh, which controls what goes in and out of, of the gravel pits. And you know, that overrides a lot of what's in the, in the Moraine Act. Another little thing that that's, uh, we find troubling is the soil regulations said that uh, a municipality or a gravel pit operator who operates outside of the municipal rules, they can allow soil to go in which is more contaminated than the provincial guidelines would allow. It comes down to the municipalities. It's the municipalities which enforce and monitor the Oak Ridges Moraine legislation. It's the municipalities which issue the permits for, for soil dumping and everything. Okay. And so that is where things happen, is at the municipal level. I mean, they make decisions every week, every day. And that's a level of government that's closest to the citizens, right? That's, that's our councillors and our mayors that, that we can reach out to, to ask them to yes. enforce the rules that are in place. Yes. So Ian, what intervention is needed and how can citizens help moving forward? So much of this takes place at municipal level. That's where the permits are for development. That's where the, the council puts forward the ministerial zoning order. That's the permits for, for building for the soil reuse sites. That all comes at the municipal level. And, you know, they do respond. When you get a whole council chamber filled up with educated citizens speaking towards a proposal that uh, they oppose, they, they do listen. Yeah. And, and they can act very, very quickly to stop a project, modify a project. What we need to have is we need to have people monitoring their municipalities yeah. on a regular basis. And when they spot anything looks a bit that, you know, might be a threat to the brain, get involved, contact the storm, contact uh, OSRTF okay. and get some help. Okay, that's great advice, yep. Ian. Thank you very much. And so we know we can reach out to Ontario Soil Regulation Task Force or Safety Oak Ridges Marine Coalition sure to help you. citizens understand these mm. threats and speak up about them. Yes. Thank you very sure. much. We're here today in the East Dufferin's Headwaters area on a property owned by the Toronto Region Conservation Area with my guest, Elizabeth Calvin. Elizabeth, could you tell us a bit, little about yourself and your work with Green Germ Association? My background is a public health nurse. So I worked as a frontline public health nurse all my working career. Wow. And in my 50s, I went back to school and studied more about public health. In the Oak Ridges Marine, there's lots of sand and gravel. Right. And so there's also a lot of pits. And there's more than 40 in the Uxbridge area. Wow. And, um, they're in varying stages and states, and we were working on developing all these trail connections and land connections uh, to protect the land, and we noticed that there were pits, <laughs> some of them close to the time of, you know, being mined out, adjacent to these properties. So we started to get interested in those, mm. too. And um, <clears throat> we tried to develop partnerships with the pit owners over the years and work with them. Mm -hmm. um, over the years we've also partnered with organizations like Ontario Nature and aggregate producers to explore how we could encourage pit rehabilitation. Right. And we've partnered with the Township of Uxbridge too. We've tried to encourage and support them and work with them to be good stewards and make the right decisions when it comes to these aggregate pits. Where we're standing is actually an abandoned gravel pit. The aggregate producers contributed some money, a foundation contributed some money, the pit was purchased and the Conservation Authority um, took it over and got, they got some funding to rehabilitate it. Okay. And now we have this beautiful, beautiful site with trails. It's a key part of the trail network, like a real entry point and there's little spots that you can see where there's rehabilitation going on with, with wildlife. You know, we're rewilding re it. So there's now this enormous network of trails. And we now have a, a national park that extends up into Uxbridge Township, uh, the Rouge National Urban Park. And so where you're standing now actually connects. You can, you can walk from here to the Rouge National Urban Park. You can walk to Uxbridge. You can walk to Lindsay. You can walk to Algonquin Park from this spot. The conservation plan, the Oak Ridges Marine Conservation Plan, says that it will be returned to a natural state once 
yes. everything's been extracted. Right. But these pits kind of morph, we're noticing, into other more permanent uses like uh -huh. aggregate recycling or places where aggregate can be brought from further away and okay. stored and transferred. Does the Oak Ridge's Marine Conservation Plan go far enough? And what would Green Germ Association like to see as kind of a gold standard for protection? As with so many things, the regulations are there, but they need to be followed. We need better oversight. I'd love to see more support for municipalities. They're charged with interpreting the Oak Ridge's marine legislation on the ground every day. Yes. And that's a hard job. They don't necessarily have the resources and the education and the staff to do this as well as they could. Yes. And in order to balance budgets, there's a really strong incentive to try to get more tax revenue from these pits. Right. And I th we think the province needs to step forward and provide better support. It's just not a level playing field right now. I think a gold standard would include monitoring of the groundwater in the areas where there's mining like this. Okay. So we don't wait for a disaster so yep. we can understand and learn more about the effects of mining on our water as it moves underground. When a pit is mined, the surface gravel and sand, which filters the water entering the ground, it's removed. So the potential for contamination to our underground water supply is greater. Yes. So anything that's stored or spilled or dumped there can flow more easily into the groundwater. And then if there's mining below the water table, it's, it's even more of a risk. Right. And then if you have several pits in an area, that devastation and that disruption to nature and potential for contamination gets magnified. Join us for a new episode to discover the marine. There's lots to choose from.